Welcome, and thank you for choosing MCC Detroit for your spiritual teaching and inspiration. If you have not already done so, now would be a good time to pause this recording and assemble your elements for a time of communion. You don't need to be a member of this church or any other in order to participate. You can select any piece of bread or a cracker to symbolize the body of Christ and any liquid to symbolize the lifeblood of Christ. We will be celebrating communion later in our service. In today's service, we will hear the message, The Time to Worship, presented by Pastor Roland Smith. Let us open our service with a prayer of invocation. Loving God, we are grateful to assemble again as your people, to honor you and worship you, we ask that you open us up to receive the blessing of your presence and receive the lesson you have prepared for us. Help us to leave this place inspired and equipped to be your servants in the world. In your many names we pray. Amen. Welcome to worship.
Today's scripture readings are found in Acts 1, 21 to 26, New International Version. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us. Beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Bar Sabbath, also known as Ju uh, Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. Now, in the next reading is Psalms 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in a way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. The word of God for the people of God. Open the eyes of my heart, God. Open the
Greetings, my brothers and sisters. I want to just thank God for the opportunity to stand before you for just a few minutes and challenge your thought processing on whose voice are you listening to? You see, the synopsis in the scripture that was read, Peter stands among the crowd and proclaims scripture must be fulfilled. Two men prayed that God would show them the hearts of those to take place in the ministry. The primary point in Psalms 1 says, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, but the ways of God. So I simply ask, whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you following? Please pray with me. Most loving and gracious God, I come to you as humble as I know how. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to stand before your people and proclaim the word that you have given to me in my heart. God, you are awesome, and you are great, and you are wonderful to be praised. So now, God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would speak through me and let this message not fall on deaf ears. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. With the daily news and social media, we receive information, negative and positive, comes from these entities. The messages comes from people that we don't know, some of our favorite DJs, some of our favorite newscasters, some we trust, some we don't. And then sometimes we even question the authenticity of the news or the message. The voices that we receive from. Have you ever been told something from someone that was so outrageous that just caught you off guard? But because who brought you the information, you chose to believe that it was a relatively safe source. Again, I ask you. Whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice is in your ear? That's the way it was in our scripture reading here with Peter. He stood among the people declaring the scripture, the resurrection of Jesus had, had to be fulfilled. The scripture had to be fulfilled and the Holy Spirit was among them. He was listening to the voice of God. Likewise, throughout the Bible, in the beginning, Adam walked and talked with God. He received clear direction and communication from God on what to do and what not to do. When he failed to listen, there was a consequence. Yes, I'm still talking about listening to the voice of God. Abraham, he listens to God and was told to give up his son Isaac. Isaac was, was supposed to be the living sacrifice. Yet, just as he was about to slay Isaac, God spoke to Abraham and said, wait, hold on a minute. Now I know where your heart is. Look over there. There's a ram. Don't you slay your son. But I have provided a ram for that sacrifice. Listening to the voice of God. Can you imagine what would have happened had Abraham not listened to God and went on and slayed the son that was promised to him? Sarah, can't, can't leave her out. She listened to God and she also laughed when God said, listen, you will be the mother of the nation. You're going to have a child. She's, she's talking about, I'm too, I'm too old. Well, maybe naturally and biologically, but she still listened. But then she chose to take matters into her own hands and help God out. And we know what happened with her, with her maidservant, Hagar. She decided, you go into my husband. You conceive a child with him, and that'll, and that'll be just fine. And all chaoticness erupted after that. Because she listened, but she chose to intervene. My brothers and sisters, don't you realize that God does not need any intervention from us at all? We need God. <laughs> 
Sarah could have avoided a lot of consequences and turmoil and strife if she just only taken God at God's word. My brothers and sisters, isn't that just like us today? We hear God, we hear the message, it's clear to us, and yet we want to finite it and tailor make it to what we want. You see, we get involved, we become the instrument of our own demise. What am I saying? God told you to go left, you go right. God says go up, but then you go down. Get the picture? When we listen to the voice of God, we cannot go wrong. What troubles us is that sometimes we don't like the answer. Does that mean that it's still not the voice of God because we don't like the answer? No, no, not so. Just because we don't like the answer does not mean it's still not from God. How many times in hindsight have you said to yourself, if I'd only followed my first mind, if I'd only done what I thought I should have done, if I'd only adhered to the voice that was whispering in my ear, I wouldn't be in this predicament. I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't be in this unpleasant situation. I'm still talking about listening to the voice of God. So often, we speak to everybody else. We speak to the neighbors. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but what are they saying to you? Are they, are, are they confirming the word that you've already got in your spirit? We talk to everybody else, and we feel like because of the relationship with them, maybe we ought to accept what they're saying. Okay? Well... I'll tell you, how's that working out for you? Whenever you don't consult the creator, we begin to mess up. When it's right, when it's affirmed in your spirit, it will connect in your spirit. You will have no doubt about what direction you are to go in. <clears throat> the desired result will be always achieved when you do it God's way, when you listen to the voice of God, you don't have to wander, you don't have to ponder, you don't have to stay up all night long, you don't have to toss and turn. You can save yourself a whole lot of doctor bills if you just listen to the voice of God. You can avoid a lot of junk and a lot of mess if we stop and consult God for the answer. And then when we get the answer, listen to it. Ask God to open up our, our hearts so that we can hear and see and seek God for the answer. Open our hearts, God. We not only want to see you, but we want to hear you. This past year at MCC, we have gone through some changes, and we still are. The leadership has stepped up come out of their comfort zones, and have tried to make the best decisions possible for everyone's safety, listening to the voice of God and science in order to make informed decisions as far as we are concerned in this church. We are doing church in a whole new way. The mere fact that you are watching this on Facebook or YouTube, that's different. All of this is still by listening and adhering to the voice of God. It's not church as we used to know it anymore. But back to our scripture, Acts 1 and 24. They prayed to the Lord and confirmed that God, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these you have chosen for the ministry. Their faith and confidence in God was so strong, they consulted with God and waited for the answer. Let me say that again. Their faith was so strong that they consulted God, not man, and then they waited for the answer. You see, so often we get in a hurry. We want to get ahead of God. We think we know best. We're going to help God out. God doesn't need our help. God is God all by God's self. Likewise, when we consult God instead of our neighbors, instead of the Facebook groups, we will tend to have the success and the desired outcome. God knows your heart. Oh, better yet, let me ask this question. Does God know your heart? You see, my brothers and sisters, 
You can fool me. You can fool others. But God knows the real you. Do you have a heart to listen to the voice of God and make the right choices? So often we get stubborn. We want it our way. We want it just like this. We want it this color. We want it this long. We want it this way. We want it that way. And yet that's not what God is saying. Well, I, I like it because it's, the, it's what I'm used to. It's, 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 we've been doing it this way for 40 years, for 50 years, for 20 years. I'm not comfortable doing it like that. Then you will sometimes miss the boat. <laughs> you will miss hearing the voice of God. If you cannot get out of yourself. And listen to God. Scripture reminds us in Psalms 1 that we do not follow the advice of the wicked. Nor, the, nor even take the trends that the sinners do. We then delight ourselves in the law of the creator, which we meditate day and night. Now, let me tell you something about that meditation day and night. You see, there is something when you can get off to yourself, when you can find a quiet space, devoid of all of the noise, when you sometimes just have to say, I need to hear from God directly and clearly. So therefore, I need the distractions away from me. That's what I'm talking about, meditating day and night. Where, wherever you choose to do it, whatever you choose to do it. Sometimes maybe it's just in your car or wherever you go to seek God. But meditate on that day and night. Then we become powerful and sturdy like trees planted by water. You see, when you, when, when you examine the, 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 the root of a, of a tree and that stuff, when the storms come, when the weather gets bad, it doesn't fall or break, but it just bends over just a little bit till the wind stops and it bends over another way. And then finally, after the storm is over, it stands straight. We can be like that tree. But we have to listen. We have to listen. Sometimes it's just not for us to understand everything all at one time. See, some, some, sometimes we have to take God at God's word. And the Bible says the secret things belong to God. So there are, there are going to be times when God is just going to show you just a little bit. But trust God. Just like the Israelites, they had to trust God going through the Red Sea. That they wouldn't get all swallowed up and killed. And then Pharaoh's army got swallowed up. They were destroyed. But Moses back then listened to God. My brothers and sisters. It is my desire that we all would listen to the voice of God and be better and do better. It's my desire that we consult God for everything and listen to the voice of God. So I ask you today, whose voice are you listening to? May God bless you and may God keep you. At MCC Detroit, we believe in the power of prayer. You may visit our website to submit your prayer requests online. These are published weekly in our e-newsletter. Please be sure to read the newsletter and pray for those who have had their names added to our prayer list. Won't you please pray with me now? God, thank you for all of the blessings that you continue to pour out into our lives. We are thankful and grateful for our health, for our homes, for everything that you have blessed us with. We thank you for your grace, your favor, and your mercy. 
God, we lift up our prayer intentions to you this week. We pray for those who may be sick or shut in. We pray for those who have been affected by COVID-19, and we give thanks to you for the vaccine and for those who are getting vaccinated to help protect your children. God, we thank you so much for all that you continue to do in our lives. We praise you today and always in all of your many names. Amen. Please join me now in reciting the Creator's Prayer. Our Creator, who we are part of, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the dominion, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Roland challenged us to hear the voice of God in ways that we have, haven't in the past. This is now the time in our service in which we quiet our hearts, our spirits, so we can hear clearly what the Spirit is saying to us. God's love for us is so immense that there is nothing that you could do to turn God away from you. Hear this voice of affirmation being spoken to your heart. Confess any sin, any transgression that you may have committed and to receive the awesome forgiveness that has been prepared for you. Would you pray with me? Loving and magnificent one, hear our prayers and we ask that you please forgive us of our sins, our trespasses we've committed against you, committed against others, and have even committed against ourselves. Thank you for hearing our cry and our plea for restoration. And you so liberally give it to us and we receive it. Thank you for restoring our place within you as a result. In your blessed name, Christ, we pray. Amen. On the night that Jesus met with his friends in the upper room, he gathered them together for his last meal with them prior to the crucifixion. And he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it, broke it, and said, take and eat, for this is my body, which has been broken for you. Each time you partake of this meal, do so in remembrance of me. After supper, he then took the cup. And he also blessed it and he shared it among his friends saying, take and drink, for within this cup is my love, my life, my blood has been poured out as a sacrifice for you. Each time you partake of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. The God who hears us when we cry, we pray that you would take these elements and bless them and transform them to be what we need them to be in order to come, close, come closer to you. It is in your blessed name, Christ, we pray. Amen. You may now partake of the meal. We thank you for the welcome table that we've been invited to sit at. Thank you for us hearing your voice of love and assurance and of welcome. 
Christ, thank you again for living within our lives, and may we be reflections of your life to others. Thank you again for this opportunity. In Christ's name, amen. On behalf of your board of directors, we want to say thank you for supporting our ministry through the giving of your time, talent, and financial resources. Please visit our website at mccdetroit.org for the instructions on how to give your tithe and offering either electronically or for the mailing address to our PO box. Would you pray with me now? Gracious God, you give to us out of your abundance and now out of gratitude, we give back to you through the giving of our gifts to this church. We ask that you multiply them so it will be a blessing in the lives of all. It is in your name we pray. Amen. And now it is time for our closing song. I want to say thank you very much to Pastor Roland Smith, to his encouraging words that, he has, that he's provided for us during his message. We have some announcements for you at the end of our time together. Immediately following this recording, you are invited to join us for our Sunday social hour on the Zoom platform. You can find the link in the email that came out this morning or on our website. You can join us and share what you thought about Pastor Roland's message, as well as connect with other MCC deers. Coming up on May 20th at 7 p.m., you can join Deacon Paul Matson for our grief group. It is designed for anyone dealing with the grief that loss can bring. On Sunday, May 23rd, Pentecost Sunday, that is the date that we have designated to return to our in-person worship in Clawson, as well as continue our online worship service. We will be having a hybrid worship service beginning at 11.30 a.m. You can find us on Zoom or Facebook Live, or you can come and join us in person that Sunday. Following the worship service that day, we're going to be having our congregational meeting. It is a time to hear about our upcoming plans for our ministry outreach, as well as our location. You don't want to miss that. Again, we're so very grateful that you chose to worship with us here. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Roland to lead us in a word of closing prayer. Beloved, thank you so much for worshiping with MCCD today. I hope something has been sung, a scripture has been read, or something has been said that would inspire you and challenge your hearts today. I want to encourage all of you to listen to the still voices of the God of our understanding right now. May God bless you. 
May God keep you. May God give you peace in your going in and your coming out. May the Lord bless you real good and give you peace this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.